Okay, I think it's about time for another episode of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. And I thought I'd just have a bit of fun with LED lights. I want to make a driver circuit for this LED here, but to demonstrate some of the problems with making one of these work, I've got a little setup here. Now, now this is a little measuring device that will measure the voltage, current, and power, so we can see what voltage is going into this light, and also how much current. So I'm going to turn my power supply on. So at the moment we're about 2.49 volts. Now I'm going to start ramping up the voltage until it just starts to come on there we are, the chips are just about started lighting up and that hasn't done anything until we've got to about 23.5 volts but now, if I increase the voltage just a little bit we get a lot of difference as you can probably see now let's bring that up to 10 milliamps just trying to adjust the voltage here so we get 10 milliamps going in. Very twitchy control I've got on my power supply. So yeah, we're about 25 volts and 11 milliamps and already that is very bright. And this is only a quarter of a watt and as you can see it's very bright. Let's see if we can bring that up to 1 watt. This will probably totally swamp out the camera but... There we go, just on 1 watt there. Let's see how bright 2 watts is. We're about 37 milliamps right now. Let's bring that up to 2 watts. I'm not going to bring the thing up to its full intensity because A, I don't have a heatsink on that, and B, that would require about 100 watts, which my power supply that I made is just never going to be able to deliver. So you can see right there, 26 volts and it's blindingly bright, 23 volts and it's barely on. So this is one idea I've had. I'm going to make a current regulator and see how well that works. And then later on, I'm going to try the typical big Clive circuit and see how well that works. So what this is going to do is this basically regulates the current. So what's going to happen is, as the current increases, the voltage across this shunt resistor is also going to increase. And when that gets to about 0.6 volts, this transistor will start to turn on. And it's going to start shorting the base of this transistor to ground, starting to turn this transistor off. And we should get a nice regulated constant current out. So let's see how well that works. Right, so here we are with the current regulator in place. So... This is connected in series between the power supply and the light. Got this meter measuring the voltage and current at the light. And this meter, which you can barely see, which seems to be a thing inherent in all camcorders, is measuring the voltage going into the circuit. So, I expect when the regulation kicks in that this isn't going to change much, but let's see. Okay, we're about 24 volts and the chips are just starting to light up. And we are now about 46 volts in. We've got 25 volts across the LED. The current is about 5 milliamps. And I'm just going to start turning the voltage up and down. Let's see how much that changes. So, 31 volts and it hasn't changed much. Seems to be holding that current pretty steady. I'd say that starts to drop off at about 30... about 35 volts. Alright, let's turn the voltage supply down to about 40 volts, which is where I intend to have it. And I'm going to adjust this so we get to about 10 milliamps. Let's see if it'll do it. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go for 15. 
Let's go for 15 milliamps. Oh, 16 milliamps. Well, that's close enough. I'm just going to do my adjusting the voltage thing again. That's, so that's 45 volts. Thirty-five volts, forty-five volts. Yeah, that really seems to be holding pretty steady. It's not perfect, but it's working good enough. So I think it's about time to give it its own supply. Well, after rummaging through my box of transformers, I finally found one that I think will do the job. So I attached a full bridge rectifier and a smoothing capacitor. And this is giving us the 40 odd volts that I need. So that's a transformer I'm going to use. So I think the next thing to do is hook up the current limit circuit and the light and let's see how well this performs. Okay, so here we go. I've also shortened the leads because it was looking a little messy. So I've got my multimeter here to measure the current. So let's just plug that in. I'm also using this as a switch, so if should something go wrong, I can just pull that out and hopefully everything, everything will be saved. So I'll just plug that in there. Okay, that was the capacitor discharging. So let's plug this in. Let there be light. Let's see, so we're about 18.2 milliamps. Right, let's unplug that. And we shall measure the voltage. The voltage across the light. So, let's see what we got. Oh, it's not lighting. Oh, stupid. <laughs> Still got it in the current jack. Good thing it's current limited. Okay, then. Let's put this on to volts. Yeah, 25 volts. So this all seems to work nice and good. Right, well. I think it's about time to try the capacitive dropper circuit. So we've got our LED. Filter capacitor. Full bridge rectifier, discharge resistor, and the power going off to the thing, and an array of capacitors that I'm going to try. If you've seen Big Clive's videos, you'll probably be familiar with this circuit, but I'll give my own explanation of it. So we've got a mains here. So the first thing the mains goes into is this capacitor here, which only lets a tiny little bit of the mains through. And the higher volume capacitor you use here, the more it gets through. Then we've got the full bridge rectifier, and the smoothing cap, and the LED. And as long as there isn't too much current thrown through the circuits, the LED will clamp the voltage down so we don't need any more than a 40 volt capacitor. The LED is at full brightness on 31 volts, but I don't intend to run it at its full brightness. So it's only at about 27 volts, but... Still, then, that returns through the rectifier and to the neutral. Of course, it's AC, so it's going both ways until it gets to the rectifier, but you know what I mean. And this resistor here is just to discharge the capacitor when it's not in use, so if you accidentally touch the prongs of the plug, you don't get a little tingle. And that's basically it. So I'm going to try various different capacitors, see which one gives me the best results, and, well, let's go do that now. Something's a little bit um, worrying there. The voltage is going up and I haven't even plugged anything in yet. So, I've got some cookies in the background in case I get hungry. And just for extra safety, an old fluorescent light ballast which is going to limit the current should anything go wrong. But this is pretty odd because it says 50 cycles a second and nobody uses that term anymore. And it was made in Great Britain. Not Japan or China. I've only got one bar on my camera, so uh, I'll just see what we can do before the battery runs out. Okay, so I've got a got I've got a 0.146 microfarad capacitor here. So let's put that across the thing. I've checked that it can handle mains voltage. Let's 
apparently can handle up to 2,000 volts. So, attach that to the circuit. Now the LED will clamp the voltage down, so I don't need to use a high voltage capacitor there. Shouldn't go any more than about 31 volts, so let's see what we get. Well, it's charging up. Might take a little while. There we go, it's come on. And it seems to be holding at about 24 volts. So, that really didn't give us much. Oh, and I am unplugging this circuit before I change the capacitors. I'm not absolutely completely stupid. Okay, this is a 0.22 microfarad. Let's see what this one gives us. Should be a little brighter. Yes, that's much better. So that's about 25 volts. Alright, let's try it with the next one up. This is a 474, that would be 0.47 microfarads. And I think this one will be the one to use. That seems to be holding about 25 volts. Okay, one microfarad. Four hundred volts. That seems pretty good. Nothing's giving us the full 31 volts though, but that might be the choke limiting the current. I'll have to have a look see what's going across that later. Okay, so here is 2.2 microfarads. It should be much brighter. Oh yes, look at that, 27 volts. That's actually casting shadows up onto the ceiling where the lights are. Okay, and just out of curiosity, let's see what the voltage across our ballast is. Oh, better put it onto AC or we're not going to get much of a measurement. Well, we got about 108 volts going across that. I really feel that vibrating when I touch it. Well, I couldn't leave this experiment unfinished. So I've gone and shorted out the ballast, so now everything that we see will be happening directly across the capacitors. So with the uh, 0.22 we're getting 25 volts. At the 407, 0.47 we're getting 25 and lastly I will try with the one microfarad hopefully nothing will blow up 26 and oh what the hell let's try it with the 22 I mean the 2.2 about 27 volts so yeah so I think this 2.2 microfarad voltage drop capacitor is just what we need. So that all seemed to work, nothing blew up which is really good. Although something could have blown up in those earlier experiments and I wasn't even aware of this but I've got my multimeter measuring the voltage across the capacitor and this meter here to measure the voltage across the LED. So I'm going to plug this in and let's take a look at the voltages. Of course it would help if this was on AC. So we... So we got about 234 volts across the capacitor. And about 27 volts across the LED. Not too shabby. But that was with the choke, not in the circuit. So I'm going to unshort the choke. 
and plug it in again. So this is with the choke. And you can see the voltage at the LED is a little bit higher, even though that's supposed to be reducing the current. And the voltage across our capacitor is now almost 350 volts. So I'm going to unplug that right away. Because this capacitor is only rated for 275 volts. So we're getting a little bit of a voltage boost when we use the choke, and I think that's because of the inductive kickback. So this capacitor was dropping way more voltage than what it's rated for. So here we are. My new bedside light. Now I've just got to find somewhere to put this. Oh, and put the LED on a heatsink as well. Well, here it is. Just got to remember though, that because this is running off live mains, and there is no isolation between the LED and the live mains, just got to remember to be careful. So here it is doing its job, lighting the room in its nice warm white glow. And I do mean lighting the room because you can quite easily see everything all over on the other side. Which also reminds me that I need a damn good clean up in this place. But anyway, that's it for now. So until next time, goodbye.